All right, so I'd like to first welcome everybody that's, that's here with us tonight. Um, thank everybody for coming out. I know this is a, a, a Tuesday night, end of the summer, beginning of the school's year. There's a lot of activities going on. Everybody's got a lot of busy schedules. So for you to be here, we know it's important to you. Um, and so we're very thankful for you to come. We'll go through and do some introductions and, and get through all the information here in just a minute. And then I'll kind of go through the, the procedure for the night. But before we get started, one thing that we do for all of our board meetings that we've done uh, for the last several years, and I want to make sure that we continue to honor that, so we open with an invocation and with a prayer. So I've asked Stevie Lau, who is the director of the Joy House and also a member of our school board, if he would open us up with an invocation. And following that, Mr. Blake Horn, if you can lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Let's pray. Father, I thank you so much for your love and your grace to us um, that we know in this community. Lord, thank you for our leaders here tonight that have set aside this time to listen to some of our um, wishes, concerns, and, and so we're grateful for that. Lord, I pray that you give them wisdom as they lead um, here in our community. Um, Father, just ask that you continue to guide and direct us for what is best here in our community, not only for recreation, but in everything. Lord, that we can be a place uh, that honors you in what we do, and that, that is a great place for our kids and our families. And we're, we already believe that and know that, and we only want it to be better. So, Lord, I pray that you would bless us with your presence here tonight as we talk and discuss and share visions and ideas. And just ask that you bless this time together. And I ask that in Christ's name. Amen. 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 serving Pickens County um, is we still live in a county where I feel like it's 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 safe uh, for us to, to really give give thanks and, and honor when we start and to recognize the great country that we live in so I'm very thankful and I know that the, the other commissioners are as well for what we do I think that just diving in you know the purpose of tonight is the town hall yes we want to hear we want to, to listen we want to make sure so I'm gonna I'm gonna read these in reverse order but the ultimate goal of tonight is to listen uh, to your desires, to your wishes, to, to what you would like to see us do in, in Pickens County in the area of, of parks and recreation. That's the number one goal. Um, we do want to be able to go through, give a glimpse of the budget for parks and recreation. I think a lot of people have never really seen that broken down into to what actually goes into parks and recreation. Um, every time I say parks and recreation, I know some of you are expecting to see Amy Poehler or some of the great characters from the show. Unfortunately, none of them could be here with us tonight. We're going to have to do this one the old way. But to explore some of the cost of, of some of the ideas that we've seen before, uh, you know, Parks and Rec and, and ideas for things that we could do to expand what we offer is, is not a new topic. And we've actually had a, had a design group that came in and did a master plan a few years ago that kind of produced some numbers as to what we can expect for certain aspects. So we want to kind of show a ballpark glimpse of what that looks like so that everybody has an understanding of, uh, of why we're not and then to explore ways on park funding. Uh, that's what we'll do at the beginning. So the first 15 or 20 minutes of it, we're going to kind of go through and explain just a little bit of, of where we're at, why we're there, what we want to look forward to. But then the, the bulk of the time is to, for us to listen to what you guys have got to say. The, the rules are, uh, are actually simple. We'll go to those here in just a second. First, I want to make sure I introduce the, the people that are here. Um, right over here on, on my left, and, and when you have a Josh T for both both your commission posts, trying to say post one and post two, I mess up frequently. But on the west end of Pickens County, uh, we have Commissioner Tippins. Josh Tippins is here with us. And on the east end of the county, we have Commissioner Josh Tatum that is, is here representing the east side of the county. Uh, I serve at large for the county as, as chairman, which means I, I handle the day-to-day -day operations, but I'm elected at large as well. So. Um, when you when you can't get your complaint through to them, they all find their way to me. So that's my job as the chairman of the board of complaints. Um, while we also have the commissioners here, we have our county clerk, Ms. Lisa Thompson. Lisa's job tonight is to somehow capture and write down what you guys are saying. So if you will, uh, if you will, if you will be patient, if she asks a question, to make sure that we capture that correctly, we may ask a few questions back and forth. 
um, then, then we'll go through. But Lisa's here. She's got her assistant deputy clerk right down here, Miss Karen Weaver, so she's going to be trying to write notes. I tried to mess with Karen and ask her to speak a lot tonight, and she almost quit. So we backed off pretty quick. Um, in addition, I'm going to ask these, these individuals that they would to stand, the ones that are here. I'm not, this is our advisory, uh, Parks and Rec Advisory Board. These are volunteers uh, that, that get appointed to serve and help try to provide guidance on what we do and how we can do it. Uh, they work closely with the director of Parks and Recreation. So as I go through, I'm just going to call out the names. If y'all would just kind of stand up so we can recognize these are people that don't get paid a penny to, uh, to do what they do. Um, and and they, they really don't get recognized enough for being willing to serve in that capacity. But chairman of that board is Mr. Tyler Mitten. Then we have Ms. Donna Enos, Kay Reese, uh, Chad Goss, Ben Pickering, Kyle Harrington, Jess Walker, Brad Lowry, and Adam Williams. If y'all wouldn't mind, let's give them a round of applause. We're, uh, we're extremely thankful for, for their service. Uh, one of the things that's going to be an end result from tonight is we're going to capture all the comments, all the different ideas that, that get, get brought forward tonight. Uh, we've had some that have been emailed we're going to include as well. And all of that's going to be produced into a document. The Board of Commissioners is actually going to attend the next Parks and Rec Advisory meeting in September so that we can have a joint meeting where all of us sit down together and take that list and try to really look at what are some ways we can start to implement and what are the, the most practical ways that we can start to move forward. So there's going to be a joint meeting coming up in September, so this group's going to be, going to be very active and involved in that. Uh, in addition, tonight we also have our Director of Parks and Recreation with us, Mr. Brian Jones, and our Assistant Director, Mr. Seth Boyd. As you can see, there's a, there's a hairstyle requirement to, to serve in a certain capacity. I, I didn't start that, but it, I, I'm proud of it um, as to, to what's required. We have several other of our staff members here as well. I, I'm not going to try to call out my name because I'm afraid I'll miss. I know I see Mr. Clayhorn, but if you're on the, the staff at, at the Parks, uh, Parks and Rec Department, would you, would you raise your hand or stand up just so everybody can kind of see? I know a bunch of them have been out the heat, so Brian is the only one. Well, Brian, I'll just recognize you individually. Mr. Claiborne, thank you for being here with us uh, and, and joining us. So the goals tonight, is that the rules are simple. They're very, very simple. Let's stay on topic. If you came wanting to talk about water, roads, all these other things, we'll have plenty of other opportunities. There's plenty of other venues. Let's stay on topic about parks and recreation. Otherwise, we'll be here for hours and hours and hours. We've got the school till 8.30. Our goal is to try to start wrapping up about 8.15 if, if people are still going. We're not going to try to run everybody out and listen, but we do have to be respectful and start to close the school up around 8.30. But be respectful of other people's ideas. I know that several are probably very passionate about what you feel uh, needs to be done or what's being done wrong or, or what's, but be, be, be respectful of other people's ideas. They're equally as passionate about what they may be bringing, so let's, let's continue to in the, in the spirit of trying to know that we're gathering that information, let's be respectful and let's move forward in a, in a fair way and, and respect what other people have got going on. I want to dig in and just kind of show you a glimpse of the budget. So if you look at the, the screen, you can see Parks and Recreation accounts for 2.5% of the overall county budget. The overall county budget is $34 million. Parks and Recreation is budgeted for $859,707 in 2023. Now we're going through the budget process right now for 2024, so we're, we'll be working through what goes on. This is your general fund budget. Out of that, 202,000 is budgeted as revenue to come in to offset that, which means if you if you do the math, you can take a look at that and realize that 600,000 of that is coming out of, of, of other sources to fund it. So it's your tax money is paying for the activities that are there, There's the amount of revenue is coming up. Uh, it, it helps, but it's not producing, a, you know, it's not one of those, it's not what we consider to be an enterprise fund that pays for itself. It's a service that's provided for the citizens. So there is a big chunk of that that's paid for out of the, the general fund. And I just wanted people to kind of understand that, to, to just to get a glimpse and see in most of that 202,000 is fees that are paid for, for kids participating in sports. So out of the expenditures, you've got all the different stuff for uniforms and things, but kids that participate, some of those, those go back in. So that's the, both, the, the vast majority of, of that. <coughs> And then rentals for the, the rooms in the community room kind of make up a, another chunk of that as well. When you take a look at, at looking at other funding that goes on, the current SPLOS that we're under was passed in 2020. That was on a referendum that was voted on 
by the citizens passed, you know, fairly overwhelmingly. It was it was a, a SPLOS that was passed. 10% of that SPLOS is designated to go to Parks and Recreation. So out of every SPLOS dollar that's received, every penny of sales tax that you pay, 10% of that goes to a Parks and Recreation. On a conservative budget estimate, that's about $600,000 a year, and that SPLOS is good for six years. So it started in 2020, it'll end in 2026. So from now through 2026, we'll continue to see that revenue come in and it fluctuates. Uh, you know, there's some years that may go as high as 700,000. It could turn around and go back down if sales go down. So as we prepare for, you know, Jeep Fest weekend this weekend with all the people coming in from out of town spending money in our stores, that helps drive that number up. So those SPLOS dollars that are able to be used are, are coming through. Um, that's one big thing that SPLOS does, like I say, expire in 2026. When you take a look at since 2021, some of the projects that have been completed down at uh, at Roper Park, a resurfaced parking area. These were uh, the entire parking lot was completely resurfaced and, and put in. LED lights were put in on the fields. Uh, I believe I may have I said on seven fields. Is it that also? Okay. So we did put LED fields throughout. What I think a lot of people don't understand is the cost of installing LED field lights on, on a field. That was close to a million dollars. That was over $900,000 to light the fields uh, in order. It's the first time we've had lit fields, but that is a, a very expensive cost to be able to continue to have sports that, that are, can move on into the night with LED lighting that goes on. They look beautiful. It's great. I just don't think it, a lot of people understand what that is. That was put out in the public bid, um, and that was the, the winning bid on the project. Uh, resurfaced the walking path. That's one of the most recent projects that was done. It was widened to nine feet. Thank you. Um, widened to nine feet, resurfaced where it's smooth to where you can go through. I think somebody was joking about seeing somebody on a scooter the other day. Um, and and you, you couldn't have done that before. Well, you could have, but that would have gave our public safety folks a, a good trip to the yard with you. Um, new playground equipment was installed. A whole new playground was put in place as well. Uh, these are all projects that have occurred over the last couple of years. So what I'm going to go into next is just to give you a glimpse into what some of the ideas that we've heard would cost. And these are not locked in stone numbers. Uh, in 2021, we had Lowe's Design come up and do a master plan to say what it would take if we were to try to redo all of Roper Park to bring it into to compliance, which was almost having to grade it down and build it back up from the ground up. But they came in and gave a big picture quote of what that project would cost. But then in that quote, they gave us a lot of specifics into individual items within what, what that built into. So I'm going to go through and just lay those out. These are just things that we actually have data either from that, that plan or from doing research with reaching out to other counties on projects that they've done as well. And I just want to show people the, the, the magnitude and the scope and we can think back to Remembering we're bringing in about $600,000 a year in SPLOS to fund projects. So that keeping that, that figure in mind when you take a look at it. Cost of a new park, this can be a number that actually starts at, at zero and goes all the way up. But if we were to try to build a park similar to with, with ball fields, if we had you know up to six ball fields, I believe was what was in there, basketball courts, um, some pickleball courts, had areas for soccer, had a pavilion with restrooms. It would be around $14 million was what the quote is. They said whether it was redoing what we have or if it was staring up and getting a whole new flat piece of dirt and starting over, to build a park of that magnitude would cost about $14 million based on, on the design scope of what was there. Park can be anything, though. And that's what when people see, keep, continue to talk about we need parks on the west end and east end. A park can be a playground, a park can be a walking track, a park can be a ball field, a park can be a basketball court, it can be a pickleball complex. There's in anything in between. So trying to clearly define when we talk about what do we mean by a park is, is actually one of the most clear things whenever we start to try to take a look at if we expand, what is the potential expansion? What do we want those new parks to look like? Uh, that number can go way down. A uh, new outdoor pool based on counties around us that are building pools at this time can be anywhere from three to five million dollars um, in order to put in a, 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 an Olympic sized pool with lanes. Uh, this is a five foot deep pool because most insurance companies are trying to get away from having a diving well at this point in time. So you're looking at a range of three to five million dollars depending on what all gets added to that. Uh, every time we mention a pool, somebody then talks about 
having having a slide that goes with the pool, having a lazy river that goes with the pool. We know we've got a county to, to our northeast that's building one with a lazy river right now that we can take a look and see how that project turns out. Uh, but you're looking at, you know, somewhere in that three to five million dollar range. A new aquatic center, indoor swimming pool with a new aquatic center that can range anywhere from 15 to 20, uh, depending on some of them can go significantly higher. And that's just on the construction, put it in the ground and make it work. That doesn't cover your operational cost expenses or anything. That's just the cost of that project. Not to try to say it's, it's good, bad, or indifferent, but it is the cost. So we just have to factor that in. New fields, this is one of the items straight off of the Lowe's design. To build a new baseball field, and this was the middle size field, I think it was 250 feet, would cost $275,000 per field. That's to level it, fence it, grass it, um, all, the, all the stuff that was there. That doesn't count the, the land acquisition if you had to acquire more land to put that in, but just the cost of actually building that field would be around a quarter million dollars. If we were to go put new fencing in for all of our fields that we currently have, it's $700,000. If you've been down there, you know that's one of the needs that, that some of it has been there since the park was built. And that's the cost. So we, that's including the dugouts and, and going through. A digital sign, I figured we'd throw one item that was actually fairly inexpensive, but if we were to put in a good digital sign on Refuge Road to let people know what's going on, we're looking at around $30,000. Um, to, to get that sign so that we can help. That would help not only with the park, but on election time, whenever early voting starts, using the community center, a lot of other activities to help provide a good way of letting people know, um, other than, than the, the wealth of knowledge that we all go to on Facebook, where we know that everything's true, and they're all facts, and nobody ever misrepresents anything. So, um, pickleball courts, this can range. Uh, it's, and I know that's, that's a topic that, that a lot of people are interested in. When you take a look at something like a pickleball court, it kind of depends what you're trying to build. Are you trying to build four courts? Are you trying to build a complex of 16 courts? Are you trying to... So that number can start and it can just continue to write. You don't know until you actually kind of define exactly what it is you're going for. But in order to put in, you know, just an established pickleball complex, the estimate from listening to other counties and taking a look at some of the numbers would be somewhere between two and four hundred thousand dollars. Uh, and that number could go up or down, obviously, depending on what was, what was done. Splash pad, very popular thing. Uh, according to Lowe's design, when we got that plan, $600,000 for a splash pad. That one actually kind of shocked me a little bit, because as a kid, we just had a sprinkler on a pad, and, and we called it a splash pad. But to build a nice professional ADA compliant one would be about six hundred grand. A pavilion, uh, to build a nice pavilion, a new pavilion that had a big covered area, uh, those, according to the designers, were two hundred fifty to three hundred thousand dollars. Another one that kind of shocked me just a little bit because I thought it's an outdoor shed. But we, uh, so I'm giving you these worst case scenario numbers on purpose because these are the numbers we were provided. I do feel confident we can still build ADA compliant projects and, and come in considerably under several of these. But those are the numbers that we had. Some of the things that you really don't get to see the bang and the perk and, and the, the benefit. But put a new restroom facility. Um, I wish somebody from Jasper was here so that I could say this as a joke and then not get back and make it look like I was being named. But those can range anywhere from 225000 to a million, is what we saw in the newspaper a while back. But 225 is the number that was within our design that we, we took a lot. I mean, it depends, honestly, on how big of a facility, but about 225000 because we had to put in a new septic tanks. And any of you that talk to anybody with Jasper, I'm, I'm just trying to poke a little fun so that y'all take the heat off of us for a minute. Um, maintenance shop can be up to three hundred fifty thousand dollars. That's something that people don't really get to see the benefit of, but it's a need that we have right now. We have a maintenance shop being shared with a concession stand and a restroom building. So it's something that we've got to separate those things and make them to where we're actually appropriately serving the, the part that we have. But it's it's things like that that you don't get to see. Um, it's kind of like paving the parking lot. Uh, we're looking at about three hundred thousand dollars to put through asphalt to pave and fix some of the paving areas that are there can't really see that except for when you're parking but when you you're parking in the gravel you see the need for it so those are those are the costs affiliated with with what's in there um, short-term funding so like I said at the beginning from now through 2026 we know what we have we've got about six hundred thousand dollars a year coming in we've got a balance sitting right now at about 1.4 million dollars after the projects that we've already done so we do have money that's sitting in the bank ready to start whatever the first thing that we start next is. 
And we were ready to discuss trying to pull the trigger. The board has met. We've talked about this on property, whether it's buying more property, whether it's trying to start the next project. And we all decided, let's pause for just a minute and listen to what the public has to say first. Uh, we'd rather listen to people face to face. We have listened to, to what, we, what we've seen popped up on Facebook. And um, I see the progress is here. It's, it's apparently a once a month editorial on what we need to do with parks. So we get to read those on a regular basis. Um, and and we, we're sensitive to the need. We're not trying to pretend like there's not a need. Every one of us have ran for office, and this has probably been the most dominant topic of every one of us going door to door and talking to people while we ran for office. Uh, it's, it's in the top three in almost every conversation that we have. So we know it's important, but before we start pulling the trigger, we want to get feedback and have an opportunity to listen and try to form a better plan on how to, how to move forward. In addition to the SPLOS funds, we do still have a, a couple hundred thousand dollars in the American Rescue Plan Act that's not been allocated. So we have a, a couple hundred thousand dollars from another project that we could actually chip in to do this without any debt or any, any increase to this thing. So we've, we've got plans with a, a portion of money. We're just trying to pick what's the first next step to take and where do we, where do we most appropriately do this. The reason I point out that the SPOS and American uh, Rescue Plan Act funds is these aren't your tax dollars, these aren't, but they, they're not your property tax dollars. Everything that the government spends is tax dollars of some kind, so we're, we're aware of that. But these aren't your property tax dollars that we're talking about. These aren't our general fund balance dollars that we're talking about. These are funds that are specially designated to do projects for parks and recreation. So this isn't like we're ignoring water, we're ignoring roads, we're ignoring something else to, to move forward, but it is money that's designated for this, this purpose. Um, when you look into long-term funding and trying to think, okay, we know this, this runs through 2026, what can we do to actually do more? What can we do that's gonna increase our ability to serve in a better, better capacity? And I kind of listed it this way on purpose because everybody will take a look and say, why would a T-SPLOS, which is a transportation SPLOS, it's another penny sales tax. Why would that have anything to do with parks? Well, and I think part of that's just to try to educate and help everybody understand how our SPLOS currently works. Our SPLOS right now is designated with 50% of your SPLOS dollars going toward roads. So those paving projects, about $3 million a year worth of paving projects are coming out of your SPLOS dollars. That's 50% that's of the total SPLOS that got allocated to go, while 10% is allocated to go into parks and recreation. If we passed a separate T-SPLOS at the same time that we passed a SPLOS, that would mean that there would be an additional one cent sales tax. But 100% of that T-SPLOS would go toward roads, which means you double the amount of funding that you have for roads. So instead of spending $3 million a year, you're spending 6 to $7 million a year on roads to improve the quality and resurface roads and try to improve everything that you've got. That frees up that 50% that was currently allocated out of SPLOS to go to roads to where we can allocate more into parks and rec. Whether it's the full 50% or if let's say we increased it by 30%, that way 40% of the SPLOS was then going to parks and rec versus going to the other projects. Then that frees up to where instead of having $600,000 a year, you multiply that by four and you end up with $24, $2.4 million uh, a year that can go into parks and recreation. So there's ways, I think, that we can look forward of how do we increase this without pushing the county further into debt, without looking at trying to increase millage rates, without trying to increase property taxes. But some of those are gonna be things that would be in 2026 before we can start to significantly see a larger portion of funds come in to play. It's also a critical thing is if we do move in that direction, we're going to have to have tremendous community support because it's 100% dependent on both of those items passing on a referendum. Because if we move in that direction and we take all the roads out of SPLOS and then T-SPLOS fails, we no longer have any more money to add to for additional road paving projects. Or if we take out all the money for parks and try to shift it to, to go the other way, and T-SPLOS passes and all our other capital projects then have to be funded through general funds, which we would require uh, an increase in your taxes. So we're trying to be cautious, but we're also trying to say there is a way. We're just going to have to be able to build community support while this current SPLOS is in place that we can significantly then start to dump in. That gives us three years to plan. It gives us three years to actually work on the projects that we can work on. If it requires land acquisition, we can work on that land acquisition, and then we can actually start putting the money into it. The only other option that really becomes, and it's listed on there, is a park bond. What a park bond means is that you get an extra millage that's, that's paying toward parks. 
So instead of having just a general M and O uh, on your your tax bill for your property, it would add a park bond on there as well. There's counties to our south that do this. Um, they're successful with it. Um, there are other counties that try to stay away from it because it is an increase in what people have to pay in property taxes. One of our commitments has all three been to do all we can to try to try to fight to keep keep those taxes as low as we possibly can. We control the rate. I don't control the value of your homes, so I'm sorry if the market has increased in, uh, increased your value. But we are trying to work on continuing to roll back year after year after year so that the rate that you're taxed on is lower with what's going. So our goal is to try to find ways that we're funding this without. Now, and I know Coach Williams is sitting in the crowd and he's just chomping at the bit wanting to say, you can also create things within what you expand your parts to do that can generate revenue to help pay for them. You just got to be realistic in how much of it's going to be revenue generation versus how much of it's going to be serving your citizens. And I'm sure as we listen to comments tonight, that's probably a valid point that some people are going to bring. If you, if you host events that bring in people from out of town, they spend spots dollars, which increases the money that you bring in. So we're aware of that. We're, not, we're, just, we're just trying to take a look at here's the bucket of money we have right now, and here's the list of the different ideas that we're trying to look at. Where do we spend that bucket of money on? So that's just to give a, a, good, a good picture of kind of where we're at budget-wise, where we can be budget-wise as we look into the future over the next few years. Um, and that's really all the presentation side that we have. Like I said at the beginning, our goal is tonight to listen to what you guys have to say. So when, we, when we, we've got two people with mics that are going to start walking around in just a minute, that are going to go through and, and try, to, try to, if you've got something you want to say, raise your hand. We've got up till 8.30 to continue going. If we finish early or we finish early, if, if we go till 8.30, we go till 8.30. But we want to hear what you've got to say. We want to capture what it is that was said. We want to be able to take that information to the board. Um, there are other mics here. I know y'all are stuck listening to me right now. They both have a mic, so if you have a question specifically for your commissioner, um, feel free to feel free to do that. I'm sure that they they are very happy for me to point that out. Um, again, back to the beginning, let's stay on point. It's parks and recreation. Let's talk about parks and recreation. Let's be respectful of the other people's ideas whenever they give an idea. Let's let's hey, they're valid. They're just as passionate as, as you might be about yours. So we'll go through those. When you do speak, if you don't mind, give your name. Make sure that it's in a way that Lisa can capture. Um, she can hear pretty good, but if you'll, if you'll say it just in a way where she can. If your name is Kozlowski or something like that, if you don't mind spelling that, she would probably help it quite a bit. Don't have to give your address, but we would like to keep up with if you're East End, West End, private community, Jasper, just something that kind of helps us keep track of where all the comments are coming from. Um, if every one of you are coming from one particular portion of the county, then that's valid information if it's spread out throughout the county. So if you can just say east, west, private, town, you can make up some fun work for, for what it is that you've got. Um, and, and like I said, we're here. If you have questions, we'll try to respond back and forth, um, but we're going to try to capture what all we can. So I'm going to turn the, the, the floor over. Just raise your hand. Graham has got a mic here. And... Um, Kirk, if you don't mind, would you grab a mic from Kelsey? Um, Kirk's in a bright yellow shirt, so you can't miss him. I'll have him carry the mic around on the, the other side. Just raise your hand and we'll go. So Steve Lau, East End, um, I'm here to talk about pickleball. Um, so these are all of our pickleball people right here. And there's a great group of us that already play here in the community, in the rec center, which we're grateful for. But the rec center is during the day. I don't know if you guys are aware, but we're the only county at 515 that doesn't have public dedicated pickleball courts. <clears throat> we're the only one. I go out of the county three to four times a week to play so that we can play and many other of my friends do the same thing um, so if you don't know it is it is like the fastest growing sport in america and that's a fact uh, it's a great the other the great thing about pickleball is the most social sport i've ever been a part of and the people that you meet and i think brian and them could probably speak to the people that come in down at the the rec center they've done that for many years and they're probably very respectful and do a good job down there but I want you guys to, I, I want to see us have some outdoor pickleball courts. I know it's something that will be used. Our neighbors to the north in LJ 
they put some in about three years ago. They have 150 to 200 people that are playing normally on four courts. They're about to go back and ask for more. And Hans can speak to this, and Bob Coleman, my friend, are going to speak just a little bit. Um, but that they will be used. And just if you don't know, to your point, and I've talked to Mr. Williams a lot, if you build us pickleball courts, I think we can generate revenue to help maintain them. Because I just hosted 250 pickleball players at Bent Tree to raise money for the Joy House, and I turned people away for the last three weeks. If I had enough courts, I can get 400 people here playing, spending their dollars here in the community, eating, staying, whatever that may mean. Many cities across the South have done that. Opelika, Alabama will be in the number one. I know we're not as big as Opelika. They have a megaplex. But they're dumping about $1.4 million back into their economy just from pickleball and all the events they're hosting there. Um, so that's been done in several different places. So um, I'm going to just Bob real quick. We're going to be brief. I don't want to be more than that. Bob, if he can just share a couple of facts. He, he and Chris are actually the pickleball ambassadors. <laughs> So I, I actually told Bob he wasn't allowed to speak tonight. I'm just kidding. You can go ahead and let Bob say it. It's not the first time. As you can tell by my hair, I'm not a member of the, uh, the Pickens County Rec Center. Uh, so, uh, yeah, we've been playing pickleball now for about eight years. Fell in love with it. And the reason I fell in love with it years ago was it's, it's unlike any other sport out there. It is indeed the fastest growing sport. There's about 38 million people playing pickleball today. But the, the biggest thing that, that attracted me is that there's no other sport that I'm aware of where you could put a, an eight, a nine-year-old child against a 25-year-old kid, against a 40-year-old, against a 70-year-old, all playing on the same sport on one court and the game actually being competitive. So earlier this year in February, they hosted the Nationals out in Palm Springs, California. I witnessed a 10-year-old play a 22-year-old college tennis player. The 10-year-old beat him in pickleball. There's no other sport out there that you can do that, okay? And it's not just a couple of myths. Um, people feel that pickleball is an older person sport. Again, that was my attraction because I lost my mother earlier this year. I'm convinced that had my mother been more active in her latter years, she would be with us today. So I'm a big fan of people getting up and moving, getting off the couch, getting outside, and getting some activity going. This sport has done that and welcomed those people. Pickleball is very easy to learn. I've had people in their 70s who have never played an athletic sport in their life, let alone a racket sport, come out, spend a few hours with us on the pickleball court, and they pick it up fairly easily. And it's pretty exciting when you can get an 84-year-old, um, I probably shouldn't say this, that lives in Big Canoe, when you can get her trash talking on the court, uh, that, that, that was pretty fun for me. Uh, so again, the biggest uh, you know, uh, demographic on players right now is, is not us old people. It's the, it's the age group from uh, 26 to 35 or 25 to 34, I should say. The next biggest group of people playing is 18 to 24, okay? So that's a younger clientele, much younger than I am. Uh, but again, those are just some of those myths out there uh, about pickleball. Uh, I happen to be a district ambassador that covers the North Georgia district. There's about 25 counties uh, through North Georgia that USA Pickleball, which is the governing body for pickleball across the United States, uh, we kind of oversee. It's all volunteerism. Nobody gets paid. Um, but there's a lot of people out there working very hard to uh, play up pickleball. I will say that, yes, I'm here to plead, uh, beg, borrow, and steal, um, to get some kind of courts, some kind of, uh, call it a complex, whatever. We just need courts to get it going. I will say that most every county that I've been familiar with that have built courts, a year later, a half, a year and a half later, just like Steve uh, talked about, LJ, they built four courts a year and a half ago, and now they're asking for more courts. All these other, whether it's Alabama, whether it's Florida, whether it's Tennessee, Georgia, every county, city that puts in courts is a year later asking for more courts because they're just getting used up all the time. So I would hope that Pickens County, Jasper, would, would, would get on board and let's just not miss out on an opportunity. We, my wife and I have lived here for 18 years. We moved here from Virginia Beach. 
If somebody had told me I'd be living in Talking Rock, Georgia and enjoying life while I was in Virginia Beach, I'd say you're out of your mind. But we, we came here, we lived here, our sons went away to school, college, they never come home, so we're free to go wherever. We've chosen to stay here. We love this community. But I will say, as Steve pointed out, we're the only county up 515 that doesn't have a complex or have courts available right now. I don't want to see us miss out on another opportunity. And I love this county, I love the people, which is why we stay here, but I think we have a, a golden opportunity to do something and do something real nice with Pickleball, and I'd just like to see us capitalize on that. Thank you. Tough act to follow these two guys, but uh, I'm Hans Rupert. I grew up in downtown Jasper. Chris and I went to school together. I know a lot of folks used to live next to Mr. Tatum and Tate. Uh, I used to play uh, tennis, not professionally, but competitively in college through high school, and then uh, about 18 years ago I had stomach cancer. They removed all my stomach, all my esophagus, two ribs, shoulder muscles. I think they gave me a hysterectomy, I can't remember. Um, but 18 years ago my surgeon said, good thing you're not a tennis player, and I said, that's the only sport I've ever played. He said, you should try pickleball. He, he was from Seattle. So I'd never heard of pickleball. Well, about three years ago, um, I had a lot of my friends recommend that I play it at the rec center. And not only did I fall in love with it, I found the sport as a somewhat broken human. Again, I've had a lot of ailments. I found a sport where I could not only be competitive, and it helped my physical health, it also helped my emotional, mental, psychological health, because I was quickly adopted by these wonderful people, and people that I wouldn't have met otherwise. But as, and I don't want to keep reiterating the same point, but I, I play five days a week, sometimes six days a week, and two of those days are in Jasper at, at the rec center, and the rest of the time I'm having to travel to other places to find a course to play. Uh, now, I, we just, a lot of us just came back from Foley, Alabama, and again, we're a smaller community than Foley, but we had 340 players show up, most of them with families, all of them staying in hotels, buying, uh, you know, souvenirs, going to their local shops, spending money on food. Um, but more importantly, they're already planning on coming back next year. And we, uh, I, I, a member of the Gastric Cancer Foundation, we raised $25,000 for the foundation, and that was above and beyond the money that was bought into the community. So, again, I don't want to keep uh, repeating the same point, but there is no other sport like this. I had an opportunity to play in Ecuador and met a man that was 96 years old who was in a nursing home. Uh, he was from South Africa and he moved to, uh, to Cuenca, Ecuador and started playing pickleball and now he's out there every single day. He said his life was basically just waiting to die and now at 96 he's out there every single day playing in what other sport other than maybe shuffleboard, uh, who wants to play shuffleboard for the rest of their life, um, can you get that kind of benefit? So uh, again, what a great community of folks and it's a great community within a community. It's contagious, it's great for you. They all want to go out to lunch afterwards um, I haven't met a person that is, uh, there's no negative side to this that I know other than the cost of building, uh, but I think we can all figure out a way to make that happen. All right, thank you guys. Who's next? Thank you. So I think the next person was wanting to talk about shuffleboard and they just decided to, you know. <laughs> Okay, my name is Leanne Carney. Uh, we live in Tate on the East End. We are the swim team, uh, just a parent here, but also a member of the community. We've been here since 2007. My husband and I moved here from Dawsonville. We love it here. Um, not a big fan of Dawsonville, but <laughs> anyways, um, you know, I see on Facebook because everything's true on Facebook. You know, every summer there's tons of parents looking for something to do with their kids. You know, what's something to do? Where can we go swim? You know, and then you see all the comments. Well, you need to go to Cherokee. You need to go somewhere else other than here because our pool is so bad. And as a parent, when we started doing um, travel swim team, if you will, <laughs> we started going to all the different communities, Cartersville, Calhoun, um, where else do we go? Cordell. Fort Oglethorpe, yeah. And you see these facilities. I'm like, holy crap. You know, how did, how did, how, how do we not have this? Because we have such a great community. I mean, I really, I love it here in Pickens, and I think we could have good facilities. We have great schools. You know, it's just, you look at our pool, and it, 
it's fine. It holds water most of the time, I think. Maybe. <laughs> Band-Aids. Definitely Band-Aids. Um, but, you know, by the end of the season, the floor is coming off of it. The kids are picking up pieces of the floor and setting it on the deck. You know, I think some sort of an aquatic center would be great. I think our high school would benefit greatly from having an indoor aquatic center where we could hold meets so we don't have to travel an hour and a half, two hours to go do that. Training facilities for our teams. We have middle school team. We've got junior high and high school. All team sports. Where do you practice swimming? Year-round team also. So, you know, I think it's definitely a need. It would be nice to support, you know, some of the other sports in town. Um, I guess that's about it. Anything else? We could host events. Just like pickleball. I think pickleball's great too, and I can't wait to try it. I would love to get out on a, on a, on a up and do that. So. <laughs> Lab swimming, water aerobics, yes. Uh, all kinds of different things we could do indoor or outdoor. But definitely indoor would be great for all of our, our school swimmers and hosting those other activities. Awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you. And we're, anytime somebody wants feedback or has a question, don't hesitate. As I, we're just trying to be respectful and listen, and I'm not going to try to, I may have a question from time to time, and then we'll go. Hi, I'm Christy Stewart, and I live in that little area that's still Pickens County, behind the Walmart. <laughs> okay, if you, if you know, Jasper's taking over all the new developments, but um, I'm also a swim team mom and a swim team grandma. My granddaughter is second generation swim team here in Pickens County. We have traveled all over the state for swimming. We have spent thousands of dollars. <laughs> and every swim parent or grandparent has probably done that throughout the career. We're talking, we go out to eat, we have to stay in hotels, and yes, we find the most incredible pools and we have one that when my daughter was on the swim team was falling apart. And it's still put together with paper clips and chewing gum. Um, so I would like you to, to really consider we'd love an aquatic center, but we'd settle for a working pool that is open to the residents because people would love to swim. Everybody goes everywhere else. When she was on the school swim team, we went to Cherokee to practice. Um, and that is quite a bit to go to practice. Uh, I don't know what else I can say, but my girls got scholarships. One got a full ride to Georgia Tech. One went to Burnett, all because they were on the swim team. Well, in addition to their academic achievements, of course, but the swim team was a huge part of that, and they're back in the community, and they're contributing citizens. So, you know, when we look at the recreation department, if we get our kids involved, and we have stuff for them to do, they will return and they will build this community. If we don't, they will leave. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hello, I'm Allie Hogue. I'm on the west side. Um, we're a third year Pickens County resident, and I wanted to take the time publicly to tell PCRD that I'm very thankful for all of the hard work that they do and the opportunities that they provide for our children. We have two girls, and like you were saying, having them involved. The, our oldest was part of the inaugural black football team. Um, Pickens County Recreation Department was instrumental in helping me ease their transition from Cherokee County. We fled due to high taxes and wanting more property. So um, I wanted to take this opportunity publicly to tell you thank you. And. Uh, something else that I wrote down that I'll come back to it. So but thank you all for being part of the community and welcoming us when we've met y'all. Thank you very much. We just eased Brian's anxiety so much, so he made it feel so much better.
as you can tell, I'm kind of nervous about this. But, uh, I don't normally speak in big, big gatherings, but I was really, I've recently retired, and I have been noticing it just really kind of dawned on me. I've been here 30 years, and it dawned on me that we have five beautiful parks, and it's six if you count the chamber, to, to go and walk on the trails or to play ball or whatever, but they're all on the east side of the county. We have nothing on the west side. We really need at least a walking park or something, or we would really like one, I would, on the west side of the county because it gets kind of hairy sometimes trying to cross 515 at different times of the day. So I would really like us to consider maybe a park on the west side. Thank you. I appreciate you defining kind of what you're looking for because we, we see the comment quite a bit a park on the west side and trying to define okay what do you want that park to be I think is, is good just to have a, a, a good place to walk. Yeah. You did point out one thing and I left that out earlier when we were discussing you know we're talking about Roper Park uh, which is the county's, uh, county's park. There are other parks throughout Pickens County the city of Jasper has, has a handful Nelson has one, uh, Talking Rock has one as well. So they're, out of the six, one is a Pickens County Park. Um, I think three are City of Jasper, or four uh, are City of Jasper. And then Talking Rock and Nelson both have one as well. So we only can speak to what we have the control over. Who else? My name is Emily Hodges. Um, I have lived here my whole life. I grew up on the West End and I now live on the East End. Um, my kids go to school at Hill City. Um, I played softball my whole life at the rec department. I grew up there from T-ball all the way through high school. And I would like to see a little more attention given to the softball, baseball, and T-ball programs. Um, the season's very short. This past year, they didn't even have opening day. Um, it got canceled due to rain, but I would like to see a little more attention given to those and possibly add a fall league because a lot of kids are going down to Cherokee County where they have a fall league and their seasons are a lot longer. So I would just like to see a little more attention given to those. Thank you. Thank you. I actually got two emails today from two parents that that's why they're not here because they're in Cherokee in a, in a fall league practice or game actually I think tonight. So. Uh, that comment was one we'd had emailed to, to include as well. Yes, ma'am. Hello. Okay. Uh, about the city of Jasper, um, maybe this is a short answer. Do you guys work together at all? Because they do have some property that seems to be kind of um, nothing happening there. So we do. Um, it, they have the control and the authority. I know they've been working on some strategic plans. We had an intergovernmental agreement for a period of time to play on the, uh, the fields at Jasper City Park uh, for the last two seasons. And we maintained it in exchange for the use of the fields. We maintained it and then we were able to, to host practices there. Once the lights were put on our field and, and trying to use the staff to maintain multiple facilities, we, we went back and had a conversation. There's some upgrades that need to be made, a, a significant amount of money into the, 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 the parks itself. So we had a conversation about, you know, if, if, if you want us to spend money on the park, if you want it to become a part of the Pickens County Parks and Recreation System, we could continue. But if, we're, if, we're, if it reaches the point where funds are having to be spent, it's either going to have to go back to the city or we're going to have to have it transferred. And, and we just kind of mutually agreed that it would go back. We have a great relationship in terms of having conversations. We're not, it, it, that's not a, an issue at all, but that is a part that they have the, the control over. I know that they've been working on, on a master plan. I couldn't tell you what it is that they're, they're doing. That would be a, a, a question, obviously, for Jasper to, uh, to respond. I know that there was a long thread on, on social media recently that was back and forth, and a couple of council members had actually chimed in about some of their plans that, that they, were, they were looking at, but I can't speak intelligently to factually saying one way or the other, that would definitely be a, a conversation for them. But if we, we do have, um, you know, there's, there's the, the, the comprehensive planning process between cities and counties is to avoid duplication of services. 
So, for instance, and I'm, I'm not saying that they have any intention, but I'm just going to use one example people have talked about. Well, actually, I'll use a different example. Growing up as a kid, when I was very young, it, the swimming pool was a Jasper City swimming pool. Anybody remember going to the, the city's pool that had the highest high dive on the planet? At it. They closed their pool, the county built a pool. So instead of duplicating services, the county started providing a service that the city used to provide. So if you were to take pickleball, for instance, if Jasper built a pickleball complex, it would be wasteful for the county to turn around and build one, or vice versa. If the county builds it, why would Jasper build one? So we try to work together not to duplicate the services that are being provided. That way it can expand further so that that way, if they are working on one thing, we're working on something else. Um, they don't have an established parks and recreation department. They have parks, they have facilities, they have maintenance people, but they don't have a, a recreation um, department that's, that's there. So uh, that's, that's kind of what separates us with the organized sports side. Um, so if you took their parks and our recreation, we'd make a great parks and recreation. So, uh, well, who would I speak with? Maybe uh, you, at you the could city. contact Jasper, either their city manager or any of your count the, the elected council members. Um, but you can you can contact City of Jasper and speak to, to either or the mayor. Um, all of them would be would be receptive. Okay, so thank you. I didn't catch your name. I'm sorry, oh. Chief. <laughs> Uh, we're from the north, almost to talking about north side, I guess. You north know. side? Okay. Karen. When you said from the north, I thought like Michigan or? <laughs> <laughs> right. Got one in the back. Uh, ooh, my name is Mike McGraw. Uh, I live on the west end of the county. Um, I'm kind of here. Both my girls, I got a 13, six year old girl, both play soccer. Um, we've had to take my 13 year old to Dawson County to start playing soccer. Uh, luckily, we still got enough kids in the younger age to play. But soccer's kind of overlooked in this county. Um, a little disappointing. We don't put any time into the field. We don't take care of the fields. The coaches have to fix the fields themselves. So it's a little disappointing. But, you know, to everyone here, we got pickleball, we got pool. Uh, this young man, he does. Uh, Baseball, he does softball, or excuse me, football. Um, you know, to me, it's got to come down to the county has got to figure out how to build a big enough complex to fulfill everything everybody needs here. Um, and to me, that comes down to commissioners trying to figure out where this money is going to come from. Um, to me, it's a little disappointing. Only 10% is going to uh, the rec. Um, I've heard in rumors that only 25% of what the rec brings in goes back into rec. So there's 75% unaccounted for, I'm assuming. Um, so it's, uh, you know, I think it's got to be put on the commissioners here to uh, stand up and figure out how um, we're going to do this and make a big enough complex to, you know, to hold everyone in here's dream that they need. Um, so. Um, you know, and maybe the T splash is the right thing to do, the splash dollars, um, but there is ways to generate, I believe. Um, like you say, and, um, you know, doing the pickleball tournaments to generate, we could do baseball tournaments, soccer tournaments, there's lots of things. I mean, we just went to North Carolina this weekend um, with my 13 year old playing a soccer tournament. And I know just from the teams that was there and what we paid, um, it was 10 grand brought into that county just for all the teams that entered into it and what they had to pay to get into the third. So, um, if there's a way to generate it, we just got to put our heads together and do it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I did want to, when you made the comment on the budget, I did pull the screen back up just to kind of show that there's $202,000 of revenue budget that comes in from Parks and Rec. It does all go into the general fund. But all eight hundred and fifty-nine thousand dollars that fund Parks and Rec comes out of there. So there's there's not a shortage of what goes in and, and gets reinvested back into Parks. We're actually reinvesting about three fourths of, of what goes to Parks and Rec is from from tax funds. So uh, not you know I just wanted to, to show you know where the raw numbers are and that way you can kind of kind of see that side. But I appreciate that very much. Thank you for your comments. Yes, sir. That's cute. I've lost my voice. Well, it's a camouflage hat. I didn't see you standing up. So. Uh, oh, my name is Jesse Cantrell from Tate. 
Um, I have a 10 year travel baseball team. I grew up playing in the county, but I always had to leave the county to play to have you know a higher standard of baseball. That's why I've tried to create my travel team. Kyle's followed suit with a team. Um, I try to get a, a, a team below us with Hayden and, and Tyler Mittens with them just to get these boys exposed outside the county. Because, like the young lady up there said, so many kids leave this county and we're losing money. You know, I, I, I know personally seven or eight people that live in the county that would never play for Pickens. They, they go to Cherokee, they go to Camden, Ballroom, Holly Springs. They, they're willing to travel. And like he touched on, tournaments. Like we, we play in Dalton, we play Rock Creek in Dawsonville, we play all the way in Gainesville. I've traveled to Powder Springs. All these park and recs, like they have their stuff together, like they're, they're hosting these tournaments, they're bringing in more revenue every weekend while they're still doing their park and rec games through the week. Like it has no interference. And I think that that's something like you touched earlier, the, the chain link ain't been fixed in 40 plus years. I guess it's the same fields that I remember playing on when I was three years old. Like, let's let's update these fields and start bringing in tournaments, like even the pickleball. If we can find a way to do this, let's start bringing people to Pickens and have them spend their money here instead of having all of our people travel other places and spend money. Like, it, it just makes more sense. Like Dalton, for example, they still have a grass outfield, they have turf infields. There's less maintenance, you can still play games there in wet weather, they rarely ever they delay games for, for the weather. Yeah, that's not a total rehaul, that's just fixing the infield. And you know, new chain link, I understand it costs a lot of money. You know, one million dollars for lights, but you know, can we spend you know, one hundred thousand dollars to fix an infield for a couple of fields and host tournaments? I mean for heaven's sakes, Holbrook Campground over in Cumming, that place has been around for a century. Their fields have never been updated. We still play tournaments there. They still have people coming in paying gate fees. Like, Pickens County can still host tournaments and make money and bring in revenue. Soccer, football, baseball, softball, and if we get pickleball, even pickleball, it seems to be something that the county wants. Personally, I would like to see all these kids start staying in the county. Like it's, it's, it's too much to become accustomed to. If you want to get bigger and better at the sports, you've got to go play somewhere else. Like, why can we not start bringing this stuff back in here? And that's why I've been trying my best to, to get a program going on each year, having a new coach and having a new thing, to get these kids exposed. So that's, that's my concerns. Thank you. And while he's carrying the mic, I do want to point out, I, I didn't really speak to, to our high school and our school system programs. And I know we've got Coach Williams here on the, the board, but anyone that keeps up with our football, basketball, baseball, softball, um, soccer, the, the amount and the, the, the product of, of what our coaching staffs are, are doing are, are just doing a phenomenal job. And I think that's a result of, of all the parents that are investing in the kids, yourself included, whether it be travel ball or whether it be a rec league ball doing all the work with these kids at these early ages, we're seeing the, the fruit of that now. I mean, you can, you can go sit and watch them in the, in the stands and see just the, the talent uh, that's, that's there is, is pretty phenomenal. So I, I want to commend all the coaches for, for what you guys are doing from all age groups very much. Mr. Moore. Thank you. Uh, Greg Moore from the East End. Um, I think we have, you know, a lot of challenges, a lot of things of that sort, and I do communicate that through email. One thing that I think that maybe could use within a quick hit type item um, would be to establish a uh, multi-level agreement with the school system um, to be able to utilize, uh, for example, Hill City. You know, let's look at uh, creating a little mini park there in Hill City or Kate or other places there where we can try to get some of these things out there. We're not going to be able to get the big picture items like the aquatic center and so forth, but if we could put pickleball or something there uh, in these facilities there and kind of distribute that out uh, to where we can be able to at least get these things out there, see how they would uh, work and have that 
uh, cooperative agreement between the school system and the county. Um, I know Cherokee County did that years ago because they only had like one park, uh, actually two parks uh, there at the time. They utilized the school system uh, land there on the school, different schools to create tennis park, I mean tennis, yeah, uh, tennis parks and so forth there uh, in these other facilities there. So I think that kind of cooperative effort, that might be a way to at least try to get some of these quick set, quick hit items uh, before making uh, these uh, major capital investments. Thank you. I will commend, we do have two school board members here tonight. I know I've, I've spoke to a couple people with the, the county office as well that, that wish that they could be here. There's a, a parent night for seniors at the high school that, that pulled pulled some away from us. So, uh, but they've, they've been incredible to work with up to this point and lending us this facility for tonight was, was awesome. This is an incredible auditorium. I don't know if any of you had been in here before. Based on most of the crowd trying to find the room, I'm gonna say y'all were like me and trying to figure out where exactly it was at, uh, but they did a, a fantastic job. I saw them, yeah. Hey, my name is Andy Carroll, we're from the west side. I was wondering, does the county have grant riders? A lot of grants out there that can, you know, be approached and, you know, and, and things written to them where you would have that extra money to come in and do some of these projects that you want to do. So we do. We, we've been researching grants. That was the first place we've been looking for a while. The, the last two years, grants that were park-specific grants have either been um, significant in nature. They were through DNR. They weren't for the, the type of activities and events that we're talking about. Or they were for very low-income uh, impoverished areas that we didn't qualify for because we're a tier three community. So we're continuing to look, uh, our grant writers actually work in the sound board back there right now. So uh, she's continuing to research constantly. We've been working with Northwest Georgia Regional Commission and uh, DCA, the Department of Community Affairs, and, and looking into grants. And that's one reason we've not been very hasty to go spend right away, because if we were able to find a grant and there was a match, then if we were able to invest a million dollars of our money to get a million dollars of their money added to it, we would have been in, in, in better shape. So we've spent a lot of time continuing to research the grant cycle first before we've you know, continued to, to look. They just really haven't offered any for, for what we think of in these type of parks. Now, if we had a very impoverished, um, Got heavy crime area or if we were a tier one community with, with, with the income levels, then there were plenty of different things that we would qualify for. But unfortunately with, with the state, we don't qualify for, for those funds, but we are continuing to look on a, on a constant basis. So thank you, that's, that's a great, I, I, I should have brought that up in the slide presentation at the beginning. Any more? Up. I see you right after you walk by, they didn't raise their hand. That was, that was timed well. That was good. Hi. Uh, my name is Jody Redford. I'm from the West End. Um, and for the past several years, I've been the team coordinator for the pick and swim team. Um, I'm also very involved in the high school swim team. And my daughter has been swimming since she was two. And I also have two older ones that have already graduated through. Um, right now, she is working on a college scholarship for swimming to go to probably Air Force Academy. So she has grown up in this in this community um, using this facility. Um, but I've also seen so many other kids. We've had years where we've had up to 80 swimmers on our swim team working in this tiny little pool that's falling apart. Um, and right now, like we just came back from state swim team this past, like last month, we had 10 gold medals along with several other silver and bronze. I mean, these kids are working really hard with what they've got. Um, we are traveling, like we actually are traveling to Cherokee County. We're spending three grand just to swim for two, three months. Just three grand in just three months, just so we can have a pool to swim in. 
because we only have the pool for a little bit in the summer here. Um, and our team is growing. And we really need to find a facility that we can keep our money in town, in the county. Um, it's, we go to team, or we go to practices in, or there's tech practices that we go out of town. There's swim meets. We do year-round swim meets and high school and junior high swim meets. We're paying, some of these year-round swim meets, we're paying $50 to swim per, per swimmer. And we're going to these meets that have 200 to 400 swimmers. Now we're taking all of those funds and we're also going out to dinner and everywhere else while we're there. So all of that money is going to other towns. We, I'd like to see it come back here and be able to build it. Also those pools can be used for uh, swim lessons training, uh, yoga classes, just there's a lot of um, senior citizens programs for swimming to keep it fit. There's so many uses for the pool and all of that can be rented out and create its own revenue for our area. Um, I just, I feel like it would be definitely an investment for the future here. Um, <laughs> You know, Mr. Coleman at the beginning of when he walked in said he was here to represent underwater pickleball, I do believe. So I think he's going for both. He just didn't say it when he had the mic. So thank you. I think there was one more that raised it. Yeah, I knew I saw him. Good evening. I'm Danny Townsend. I live up in Talking Rock. Uh, I was born here and I've lived here my whole life. I'll be 66 soon. And work, I work well, 60 hours a week. A pastor of Black Creek Baptist Church in Gilmer County. So I'm pretty busy. And I, I take Nate and I go with some other kids to other parts of the state to do their practice for swimming. So I would love to see one of those swimming facilities built here in our county. I'm speaking for the for the old school part of the county. So I've been here all my life. So. It'd be great, and thanks for Coach Deb and all these people that put in their time for these kids. I uh, know free of charge. And uh, so they, like, like myself, we went to back to Georgia not long ago when I spent probably $2,000 myself. Uh, just for me and Nate and my wife. So if there is money to be made, you know, for the county and for, and there has to be, I got some friends in Gilmer and some in Cherokee, so I work all over. I'm gonna check into the little bit of the lucrative part of it, but I like the pickleball, the sound of that too, you know, all these people have great ideas and I love it. But uh, I really want to support these kids. And uh, like at church, they say the kids are the church of tomorrow, or, they're the church of today, in my opinion. You know, if we bring them up in church. So, all these kids on these swim teams, I've never seen anything out of the way uh, with any of them. They've got some good leadership that teach them things for life, not just swimming. So, uh, so I think it's got to be a, a lucrative way for the county to invest in that. And I'm not running for office either. So, <laughs> I wouldn't want the stress. <laughs> Another year and four months, I'll join the fishing team. <laughs> so, so anyway, that's all I want to say. I, I want to put all my effort in pushing for this for these kids in this county first week. Okay, so, thank, you. thank you. That's my two cents. <laughs> and I think that it's been hit on in multiple conversations that whether we're talking about the youth sports side of things for the kids, but we're also talking about the senior population and. It, our our population in Pickens County, if you follow the the, the trends in in our uh, our different census data that keeps coming in, we're growing more in the senior population than we are in the youth population. That doesn't mean we've got to give less attention to kids, but we do have a growing senior population. I think that means we're all getting a little bit older. 
because uh, I remember when our pool was built, I remember being there on opening day. Um, and I think I was a happy seven year old at the time. So uh, I'll join you in talking about I played, I played T-ball on those fields. Uh, I learned when it moved to baseball that I got hit in the face quite a bit. So I didn't have the coordination to continue at that point. But I grew up at the in the same part, so um, we are we are aging, and we're seeing the needs. I think continue to expand. All right, I got one more coming up in the back. I'm keeping a glance at the time. We're still at about fifteen till eight, so we're still we're still doing okay. When we get closer to eight fifteen, I'll start kind of making sure we're closing up. I'll try not to take too long. Um, my name is Tony Santinelli. I live in the north part of the uh, east section of the county. Uh, I've been here for almost nine years now, so I'm probably a youngster compared to all the people I've heard that said they've lived here all their life. Um, <clears throat> and I find that very interesting because I've lived in many different states over the course of my career and recently retired. I played pickleball, so I'm part of this pickleball crew. I started playing pickleball about a year and a half ago. I've never played it before. I played tennis in the past. I played racquetball in the past. Never played pickleball. I'm not going to spend time talking too much about pickleball, but I can tell you that it seems just listening to folks here that you need a comprehensive, long-range plan to do anything, and you've got to have a, a method of raising funds besides tax dollars. You look at Cartersville, Dillard Park, you look at Emerson, that huge complex that they built in Emerson that has multiple fields that have uh, lights and everything else that you can imagine. In Emerson, a small little tiny town in Bartow County. I mean, seriously, you look at some of the other facilities in and around the area that you heard people talk about. I didn't realize that there's really no swimming facility here in Pickens County. I mean, my kids are all grown up and out of the house, so, and they don't live in, in Pickens County, so I've never, I've never even been to a football game, but I've been to plenty when my, here in Pickens, but I've been to plenty when my kids were growing up uh, in, the, in the areas where we lived. I can't believe that we don't have a complex in for swimming and the pool, basically we spend all this money on the pool for it to be used like three months out of the year at most, May, June, July. It closes in early August when kids go back to school. You gotta build things that can be utilized year round in order to justify the cost to maintain those things. To me, that is a, you know, that, that's a losing proposition, the pool, but I realize that it served the community very well. As a matter of fact, this year was the first year I took my granddaughter to the pool outside, and then only to find out that it was closed when school started, or shortly after school started. Uh, and, and here, the last two weeks, we've had the hottest weeks in the summer, and you couldn't utilize the pool. So, I think you have to have a comprehensive long-term plan. You've got a lot of volunteers that certainly would serve very well on a board, and you've got to prioritize. I heard swimming, I heard pickleball, I heard baseball, uh, softball, t-ball, soccer. Um, if we don't have those types of feels for the kids, we're not doing a justice to the community. Uh, and so, you know, work on, before you start spending more money that you don't have yet, put together a long-term plan, figure out how you can raise money without raising taxes, and figure out how you can prioritize so that you can deliver these things to the community as a whole. And it's not going to happen overnight, but if you put together a plan and people can see you're executing to that plan, you'll get community support like you would not believe. Because you can see all the volunteers that you have here. Thank you. Yeah. No, thank you. Thank you.
And I think uh, but maybe I didn't do a, a good job communicating our, our agenda at the very beginning whenever we were we went out. One, we did work with trying to develop a comprehensive plan. That's what we paid was designed to come in and do. The only problem was what they were talking about would require tear and everything that we had and would lose all services while that was under construction. Two was the whole purpose of tonight is to listen to take that plan and sit down with the, the advisory board, the, the volunteers of the advisory board, to build the long-term plan, the short-range projects, and then what the long-range projects are. So I think we're on the same page. We're right there together. It, collectively in the room, you have uh, myself as the longest-serving commissioner and that's two years and seven months. And the two of the other Joshes are right at one year um, on each of them. So we inherited what we've got and we're doing all we can to try to listen to find out, okay, how do we take what we've inherited and turn it into something good? How do we invest in it and turn it into something great? So uh, we're right there together. It's, it's not something that, that I disagree with you in any way, shape or fashion. That's what we're, we're our goal is, is to, and let's look at, that money that has to be spent before 2026 because law requires that we use those funds before and then look at the future for what we do moving forward without having to do an increase on, on any taxes. So that's that's our goal completely. So thank you. We have one in the back. Oh, no. No, sorry. If you just stay down here, Graham. Well, actually, she probably didn't need a mic, but you can go ahead and take it to her anyway. <laughs> we'll let Miss Gibson jump in. <laughs> This may be our last comment. I'm just going to go ahead and warn everybody. But look. Okay. I have just a question, not a comment. Um, so Amy Gibson, West End, Best End. Um, have we ever just sat down and, like, Coach Williams is a great coach. So I'm going to use him as an example since he's on the board. Has he ever called? Could we have someone to call around to Dawson County and say, how much money do you get per travel ball term? How much money do you get Cherokee County for each swim tournament they have? Have we ever done that? So, so we, we know financially where we start. We have in some of the categories, not in all categories. We haven't necessarily reached out on the swim with the, the larger aquatic centers because we know that's probably a little bit of a further down the road to come up with enough capital to to tackle that level or a partnership between the school and the county that, that we would have to figure out the, the best path to get that capital in place. Uh, we have on some other travel programs looking at the tournament hosting and things like that as to, to what those those revenue items are, what the generate, it, it, what they come in. So that is something that, that from a staff perspective, I know Brian and his staff have, have reached out to, to several counties. I think they were in Gilmer earlier this week following up on some things they've been talking to, to counties all over just trying to figure out what's what's working best and, and you know to the counties that, that may have done some things that they wish they could go back and undo um i know we've talked to a couple when the skate park got put in in the county south office when you talk to several of the people that are having to deal with with some of the the, the constant vandalism that goes on they they've made some comments and we sure wish the, the commissioners hadn't hadn't been willing to spend the money on this one because it puts a, a burden on trying to constantly keep it fixed. But some did tell us the, the great program is like splash pads. We didn't realize how much maintenance went into a splash pad and how often they tore up. But places that have them have told us it's it's a money pit to, to go into. The pool, I know, um, you know, we've, we've heard quite a few comments. We know the pool is in desperate need of repair. Uh, the operational cost, though, is probably not as high as you think. We're spending $41,000 a year in operational cost on the pool. That's including the lifeguards. So we're not throwing millions into something that's in that bad of a shape, but it will take millions to get it into the shape it needs to be. So we've, we've looked at, at repairs and you know, there's seven figure repairs because you pretty much have to tear it out and some of the repair companies have said you'd be better off to, to build a new pool than to try to repair what you got it's not the best spot anymore at one point in time that was a rural spot sitting up by the road um it's not as rural anymore it's pretty crowded and there's a lot of cars there's a lot of traffic and um you know you get your kids out there playing in the pool and, and traffic driving right by the fence so we know we're, we're aware of that this has been a conversation that we've had over and over and over again um, we're just we're wanting to gather this input compile the list compare it to all the things that we've done on the research sit down with the board work out that long-range plan what's our short term what are the things we can do right now can we realistically go ahead and provide a b or c 
while we build the comprehensive plan to put the rest in, in place. And, and do we try to start small? Um, you know, I'll use pickleball for an example, talking about the counties that put four courts in and then later on need to come back and expand. The things we can expand in the future, you've got to have the room to expand it. So we've got to make sure that we've got the property that allows for, for those type of things because you don't want to go bust up what you what you put in and invest it in. So that is that's definitely part of our research side. We spend a lot of time trying to call around and find out what everyone else is doing. And, and you know, we've talked about the the cost for starting something. The one thing that we, we've not is the operational cost once it's there. Um, you know, the heating of an indoor pool, Lumpkin County did a bunch of research. They've ended up going with an outdoor pool and what they're building now, but they were working, the, the commissioners and the school system were originally working together to try to come up with a collaborative plan to build a school that the schools could use or build a pool that the schools could use for their, their meets. And they had a dome. And that's why I was kind of looking forward that they were going to build it so we could see what that dome looked like. And then the heating, well, the, the debate came down to who's going to pay the heating cost of the pool because the only people that it was really being built for in the summertime was for the school programs, not for the parks and rec programs. Well, the school came back and refused to pay. And so the, when they built the pool, they said, well, we're not going to heat it. Then. <laughs> we're just not going to fool it. So we were looking forward to seeing that. But in that, they gave out some estimates of what the operational cost to heat an eight lane or a 12 lane um, pool was going to be. And it was... It was significant. I don't remember the exact number. I had it on a, on a note card to, to bring, but I didn't bring it with me. But there's a significant amount of operational costs that we've got to then factor in. Not only do we have to come up with the capital that we're going to build it, but then you got to have the capital that's going to continue to operate it. And can you create enough? Is there going to be enough fee-driven activity to, to run your operational, whether it's additional staff or chemicals or things, heat, all that? So we, we, we're trying to gather all of that and use that in, in putting together our, our full comprehensive plan, or is there a way to do another type of dome that doesn't require the level of heaters? And, and if so, we're going to continue to research and see where places that, that have those as well. Uh, a dome would fit with, with our hairstyle. So, uh, yes, sir. I'm Tom Collins out of uh, Talking Rock Northeast area. Um, new resident and I moved here from Paulding County and the community that um, all surrounded there had a very large Olympic size pool and the swim team for Paulding County started using this pool and they um, came up they have like a tent thing that they put over it in the wintertime so they are able to use it year-round so I would encourage you to reach out maybe to, um, it's the Bentwater community, mm -hmm. and um, I think the, like the Paulding County High School uh, swim team utilizes that. So in your research for like a removable dome, mm -hmm. you know, to have it as an outdoor pool during the summertime and then in the wintertime, you could utilize the facility during the winter uh, for swim meets and all that kind of stuff too. So uh, maybe reach out to the Paulding County yeah. uh, and research that. I wasn't aware of, of Paulding having that, so thank you. Definitely put that on. All right. I don't see any hands going up, so if we don't have any more, I don't want to try to rush everybody out if somebody's just been sitting waiting to be the last person to close us out. But I want to thank everybody for for everything. I think that I mean I think we've got some incredible. Uh, information, incredible ideas, uh, your passion has definitely came across, but it's came across in the way that we hoped it would with, with a tremendous amount of respect. Um, this was, was a, a very pleasant. I would be remiss if I didn't try to open up the opportunity for my, my two colleagues to grab a microphone and talk for a little while. They've, they've sat and enjoyed me having to do this. I'd just say thank you all for coming. We, we sincerely appreciate the feedback that you've offered and uh, appreciate everybody being respectful If y'all want to believe it, in executive session when we're arguing about different points, they really talk a lot in public <laughs> meetings. They stay a little bit quieter. So, uh, but I, I do. I just want to say thanks. Thanks to the the school, Pickens uh, County Junior High, to the school system, to the superintendent's office, to 
uh, the board for letting us be here tonight, for letting us use the facility, for opening up their doors. We appreciate the, the use of the facility very much. But most importantly, thanks to you guys for being here, uh, for your feedback, for everything that you've given. We're going we're gonna to compile this. We're going to create a document that has it. We're going to kind of make that available. We'll be meeting September 13th with the, the advisory council to begin that process with them. That's the first meeting. Uh, but it, it, I think, is a, a neat joint endeavor. It's one of the first I've ever heard of where the full board of commissioners is meeting with the full advisory board so that we can all sit around the table together uh, with the staff and, and really get this process going the right way. That may lead to inviting in others, uh, especially from the school and from some other places that, that, that we, can, we can work through these projects together. So thank you. We really appreciate it. And please be safe going home. Thank you.